You know, when I was a kid, I remember distinctly in the fourth grade, the school that I went to required us to take art as a class. There was three classes outside of STEM classes that we had to take. We had to take art, PE, and some form of musical instrument. So you got the choice to be in band or orchestra or you could choose to play the recorder. People who played the recorder got their own separate class. It was kind of just a joke for whoever chose to do the recorder. But I remember art was my favorite of the three. I was a bit of an overweight kid at the time, so PE was the most embarrassing class because I couldn't do push-ups and was constantly bullied. But I remember art where I could apply myself creatively was my favorite class to go to during the day. And I remember in the fourth grade, specifically, we had one project where we had to, we had to recreate the Mona Lisa. That was the assignment, except instead of painting the Mona Lisa, we were doing a portrait of ourselves sitting as the Mona Lisa does in her portrait. Feet to the side, you would, the head needed to be looking to the left, with the eyes looking curiously to the right. And on top of that, you had to paint yourself doing your dream job. So whatever garb or attire you were wearing in the portrait that you painted of yourself was supposed to reflect what you wanted to do with your life. Keep in mind this is fourth grade. So I remember there was kids, they were painting there was kids painting themselves as NFL players in football pads and jerseys. One kid did an astronaut because he wanted to be an astronaut. There was a few doctors in the class, people who put themselves in, in surgical masks or, or white lab coats. There was a NASCAR driver which was pretty cool and outside the box. But at that time in my life, one of the most cherished things that I enjoyed was writing and reading. Like I said, I was very overweight, so I wasn't good at playing sports. And I had just won a writing contest in school and it was the first thing I'd ever won in my life. So I painted myself as an author. I just had a normal button up, some glasses on, with a pad of notebook paper in front of me, and a pencil in my hand. And that was it. It was just it was just baby me, a young version of me, painted with all of the writing utensils necessary in order to be an author. There were no influencers. Nobody painted themselves or aspired to be someone who would influence people on social media. There was no social media whatsoever at the time. I think flip phones were prevalent at that time. I want to say my parents probably each had a flip phone. However, we were in fourth grade. Most of us had never even experienced the internet before. I know that I didn't. And so the thought of dreaming of becoming one day someone who posts pictures online with these long, drawn-out captions or makes videos to be inspirational or motivational. None of that was a thing when I was in fourth grade. I mean, I wonder what I would even pay myself doing if I said I wanted to be an influencer. 
would it just be me with a cell phone or me with a camera, me getting a million likes on Instagram. At that time in my life, the term influencing meant something much more than I think it does today. There was a foundational difference that the term carried when I was in fourth grade. And I think what that difference can be boiled down to is there are those who do what they do so that they can be an influencer, and there are those who influence because of what they do. I think a lot of what the world has become today is creating our schedules and our regiments and posting the pictures we do and saying the things we do online in order to captivate an audience, in order to inspire a following, so we can make those around us adore us. I mean, I saw, I saw a YouTube video the other day and it was talking about the things that you need to do to grow your audience. And it had this whole entire schema planned out of you need to post this many posts a week, this percentage of them need to be reels, this percentage of them need to be pictures, of those pictures, these ones need to be service level, these ones need to be in depth to show your humanity, and it said that to show your humanity. Post X amount of stories a day, how many videos you need to be posting, also that you can grow your channel. I think the most annoying thing I hear whenever I watch YouTube videos that turns me off is when people say, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and hit that bell. As if I'm just going to forget to do those things when I'm watching the video. I don't think anyone who watches videos forgets that if they like what they're watching that they can like the video or they can subscribe to see more or hey if they want to know that more of this content's available then they can get a notification of it i don't think any person out there forgets about that sort of thing these days and when i say that there's people who do what they do so that they can be an influencer and there's those who influence because of what they do it sometimes feels like the people that make these videos or write these blogs or post these pictures only do so so that they can grow a bigger following, get more likes, feed their dopamine receptors every time that they see that someone has liked their content. And it feels like the amount of people who do it because it's what they're passionate about and it's what they love doing it feels like that number of people is slowly starting to dwindle and decrease in society today. In fact, I think that if I had to go back to fourth grade in 2023, I would guarantee at least 10% of my class would want to be an influencer. Whether it's a YouTuber, a TikToker, someone who has a famous, whatever that means, Instagram profile. Someone who has enough sponsorships to be making $100,000 every single month. The more I think about it, the more I think 10% is actually a gross underestimate of how many people, how many children would want to grow up to do that. And don't get me wrong, I don't think that there is anything wrong with dreaming to have a life where your sole profession is to inspire other people. I think one of the most amazing things humans can do is try to inspire other people to be better than what they are. But I think where things are going wrong today is that people's motive is to do the things they do so that they can be an influencer. To give money to a homeless person so that they can record it. I saw a TikToker a couple months ago. I found his page because it popped up on my For You page and he had this amazing bodybuilding transformation. He had lost something like 100 pounds. And I remember every video at one point was him talking about how he wanted to make it as an influencer. That was like his number one goal. He wanted to build a following so that he could help other people lose weight like he had so that he could do 
coaching so that he could get sponsorships. And I remember looking at his page, and it was just months of these posts of him talking about how he was going to do all he could to make it work in his life so that he could be an influencer. And him complaining that his posts were not getting liked enough or being on the right side of the algorithm. And I stumbled on his page again the other day and he had the same amount of followers as he did months ago when I first saw him. And it was because he had stopped posting. And he had made his first post again for the first time in months. And he had put the weight back on. He was overweight. He was addicted. He had fallen back into drugs, which he had previously gotten clean from. And he had fallen back into all his old habits of living again. And he was talking about how he had realized that the only reason he had kept working out months ago and stayed clean off drugs was because he felt like he had to keep up the facade for his videos and the content he was creating so that he could ultimately become an influencer. And then when those dreams were crushed because of his persistence, it did not happen. He fell back into his old lifestyle. And it turns out that the person he was portraying himself to be, the portrait that he was painting of his future self, was not actually who he truly was. There's something to be learned from people who influence because of what they do, instead of doing what they do so that they can be an influencer. Social media can be used to do absolutely amazing things in this world. It has curated a community and connected the people of this world in miraculous ways, quite frankly. It's also been used to create all sorts of evil, and we don't need to get down that rabbit hole. And I'm not knocking people who want to inspire others in this world. It's a very noble cause. It's a very difficult thing to do. But I think you need to be very careful about, ex about looking yourself in the mirror and examining why you're doing what you're doing and the motive behind your actions. Because at the end of the day, if it's just to receive the gratification of others, you're going to live a much sadder life than a life lived pursuing the things that you're passionate about. Now, I can't speak for my fourth grade classmates. I don't know if any of them are doing the things that they wanted to do or that they painted themselves doing when they were in the fourth grade. I still, to this day, want to be an author. I still write fiction every single day. And I don't do that so that I can be famous. I don't do it because it's gonna make me a New York Times bestseller, even though that would be nice. I do it because I wouldn't be me without doing it. It's what I'm truly passionate about, just like making videos. I don't make these so that I can receive a million likes. And if you ever catch me asking you to subscribe or like my video or hit the bell, I hope you reach through the screen and slap me on my face. I hope that any of you who are watching this video don't do what you do because you want to receive gratification from it, from the people around you, but because it's truly what sets your life on fire and what makes this life worth living. It makes it easier to get out of bed in the morning. And that you do it with such a degree of integrity that you don't need people watching you in order to continue pursuing your dreams and that you don't quit just because you're not getting likes or awards or gratification for pursuing your dreams. I want to leave off by saying that I hope anyone who's watching this video knows that it is never too late to paint a portrait of your future self doing the things that you dream to accomplish in life. And I just pray that along the road of trying to accomplish those things, that you don't quit or give up on yourself just because it's not gonna produce fame or notoriety or clout, but that you pursue that dream because you would not feel alive without doing it. You could be 80 years old and still have plenty of time left on this earth. Don't be deterred by the doubt around you. Because as long as there's still breath in your lungs, you can still accomplish feats that will influence millions of people.
Thank you.